I'll incidentally also this book uh, by Ralph Mayer. You can see it's been well used. It's um, an artist handbook on materials and techniques by Ralph Mayer. And it's got everything you've ever wanted to know about oil painting, all the pigments, the, all in detail. Um, that's a handy book to get or to reference. So here's my basic palette, very basic. Um, I usually have a cool and a warm colour for everything. So I, I've got a, a, a lemon yellow, a yellow, yellow ochre, an orange, a sort of a vermilion, uh, and a rose red here, and a dark brown, and a sienna. So I tend to put all the warm colours a bit together. I put the black on that side, the white on this side, and then the greens, a sap green, a viridian green, um, a cerulean, an ultramarine blue, and a violet. So that's basically the palette I work with. The very basic palette. Um, now with the brushes, there's two types of brushes I work with. One's the soft synthetic. I mean, these are substitute for sables, which cost you know, $60 instead of, these are quite cheap. But I tend to use them near the end of the painting, not at the beginning. Um, or sometimes I'll use them for outlining. And, the, and then you've got the hog hair brushes, which are much stiffer. And you can get really cheap ones or you can get more expensive ones. I just buy the flat ones, very basic. I think it's not so important. It's more about, with painting, it's more about the handling of the brush the, the brushes and the quality of everything it doesn't it matters but it's not really of prime importance if you if you've only got cheap materials available it doesn't matter you can still make a really good painting so it's no excuse to not paint because you can't just buy the cheap stuff if you can't afford it so anyway so when when i start see so i just put my brush and it doesn't matter i'm getting a, a sort of a medium tone I might put a bit of white with it. So I'm just mixing a neutral colour. And I've got... The, so this is the picture that we'll be painting today. Um, it's an iris that I photographed in the garden. And then I've fiddled around with it, with the colourings, and I've changed the colourings a bit on my settings on my pad. So, um, so that's what we're going to project onto this canvas here. Now, to start off with, you can use a charcoal to outline things and draw out the whole drawing out very neatly. And, but what we're after is just a diagram form. So we just want the big shapes at this point. So we're just doing a, a sort of a rectangle here, a sort of square there, and a sort of a triangle here. Oh. So here we go. So I just go like that. We check the outside edges of the canvas, how far we want the, the flower to come to, there or there. So we, but it, it doesn't matter if things aren't quite right at the beginning. It's See, this comes to a little bit near the centre, uh, off centre, so that's about here. So you just whack that in, it's, so it's very rough. We don't want any detail, we're just doing the edges here, check how far you want it from the edge, um, there, and you just go up there, and how far from the edge do you want that top to be, sort of there. Um, there. Now this is quite a big space between here and there, and I've got it too close, so I'll just go, I'll just throw it in there and see what that does. Um, then I look at for this, so then I stand back, which is very important, and you can just compare. So you, you do a lot of comparing and measuring at this point. So you're just um, looking to see where you can um, alter it if you need to. 
I think that's all right, so I'll just leave it. And now I'll just add a bit more detail in terms of where the center is. So go to the center there. Yeah, that, that big leaf goes in there. Um, that, the distance between that one and that one. So this is basic drawing to get everything in its right spot. It's no use putting all the detail in and then having it all in the wrong area. So, um, Uh, there's another leaf that comes up here and goes there. So like that. And there's a bit sticking out there, which we can do later on. Um, there's a bit... See, look at the negative space in, in there. So it comes in there. So look at the size of that. It's a shape like that. So I'm looking at that shape, not this one. And I just curve that around to there. So you've got, see this, this is one shape that's just as important as any other shape. So look at the negative shapes as well. This shape here, this triangle down the bottom is a shape. And, you know, so, so they're all the shapes dialoguing with these shapes. So as an abstract thing of uh, flow and energy, you can see on the page if, it, if it's working or not. If you if you like it, if you like a bit more, if you like a bit more flow, I'll just add to it a bit more like that. So that way, because I want that one to be a little bit bigger than in the photo. I don't. I think in the photo that needs to be a bit bigger. So I'd make that bigger. So there. So it's all right, just for the sake of composition. So that's the step. That's the diagram, and I call this like a diagram. You just want the big shapes as a diagram in the picture. So once you've done that, you can um, put that aside and you can just mix your um, colour. Now for this one, because it's got a blue background, I might just um, do black and and go into the blues. So it's a cool, a cool black. So then it's just a matter of filling it in. And for this point, don't use too much of the medium because you're going to try and get good coverage in, in the first instant. little bit of medium to make it flow 